Praise the Lord. You are welcome in His presence in Jesus Christ's name. share the broadcast if you're online please share the broadcast let's pray Father in heaven, we thank you. We give you praise. We give you glory, honor, and adoration, Lord. Thank you, Father, for a new day. Thank you for opportunity, O oh God, to hear from you, Lord, to receive from you, Father. Thank you, Father, for we are full of expectation this hour, Lord. We know our eyes is going to be open, Lord. We are going to minister life into our spirit, Lord. Many people are going through so much, Lord. Many are going through pains. Many are going through sickness, Father. Many are going through different, different challenges, Lord. Father, I pray, O oh God, that you will visit them all at the point of their needs in the name of Jesus Christ. As we trust that you will speak to us this day, Father, may you take absolute control, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. For in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. You're all welcome in Jesus Christ's name. I hope my voice is audible without wasting time turn with me to the book of um, first corinthians chapter 15 verse 53 first corinthians 15 53 please share the broadcast share it with others share it if you can reach um sister mary jane please let somebody share the broadcast i don't know why i can't see how my list first corinthians 15 53 by the grace of god i will be speaking on immortality within mortality this topic is very very important because it has caused so many discrepancy so much has come out of this topic by the grace of God, we are going to trust the Spirit to open up this topic and give us an understanding. 1 Corinthians 15.53 I read, For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality so when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption and this mortal shall have put on immortality then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written death is swallowed up in victory now what is immortality Many a times we give wrong meaning to wrong words. And immortality happens to be one of those words that we give wrong meaning to. What actually is immortality? When you look at the property of an ion, for example, an ion can last for a long time except it is exposed to condition that will make it to rot it will last and continue 
to last. Now, when we talk about immortality, immortality is God kind of life. Immortality has nothing to do with this flesh. Now, we must get this. Immortality have nothing to do with this flesh. Immortality is the life of God. It's God's kind of life. It's like a Zoya life. It is a realm that God dwells. Only Him dwells in that realm. Only him dwells in that level of life. Now I want us to get it. Listen. Because of the nature of man, man was shut out from the life of God. Immortality is God's kind of life. When the Lord Jesus Christ was here, I remember in one of the days he prayed, he said, Father, glorify me with your own glory. Glorify me with your own glory. So there is a glory that is beyond the present glory that we are experiencing. So immortality is God's kind of glory. It has nothing to do with this flesh. It is a life. It's God's kind of life. It's God's kind of nature. It's God's... I don't know how to put it. When you have put on immortality, you will be dwelling where God dwells. You will be able to commune with God where he is. You'll be able to approach him. Without putting on immortality, you cannot, God is unapproachable. You cannot reach him. You can't reach him. You cannot reach him. He dwells in the light where no man can approach. No man can dare to approach it. That is where he dwells. So it is God's kind of life. It only belongs to him. Many people are living out in this life and dwelling in the presence of God. Those that have put on immortality, they dwell in his presence. Why they are here? It has nothing to do with being out of this realm that we call physical death. It has nothing to do with that. It has nothing to do with that. It has nothing at all whatsoever to do with it. So immortality belongs to God. It is God's kind of life. Now when you look at the creation, you look at the life of animal, for example. The life of animal is natural what makes it natural it is natural because it depends on a natural kind of food to be able to continue to exist the life of man also is natural is natural because it depends on natural kind of food to be able to continue to be sustained. You can only sustain it through natural. Immortality is on a different level. Is on a different level. When you have put on immortality, you don't need to sustain it with natural kind of food. By the grace of God, I'm going to break this down to the way we can understand it. Now, don't 
misunderstand this life with God's own kind of life. Don't misunderstand the two. The two are not the same. They are not the same. And that's why when Paul was talking about two body, he was talking about, he said, there is a natural body. There is a spiritual body. There is a natural body. There is a spiritual body. He said it is so a natural body. It is raised up a spiritual body. So it is a raising up that we are going to look at by the grace of God. Let somebody say amen to that. Now, let's look at some of the meaning of this. Mortar. What is the meaning of mortar? Mortal is something that is sustained. Is a life that is sustained. If you don't sustain it, it's going to die. So it depends on, you know, it depends on a guideline. So it needs to be sustained. Now listen. The life what makes us mortal is not this skin. It's not the skin. It is not the skin that makes us mortal. This is just a coat that is housing the man. Now I will tell you what makes us mortal. You see, it is the life of God that is brought into mortal, natural subject. It is subjected to a natural condition god put his life in us and this life of god is subjected to natural ordinance that is why it is mortal it is put on that subject there is a way the sun must operate everything that is natural has a way they walk if the sun goes against the natural way things are going to happen everything that is natural has a standard now i want you to pay close attention to this if you take up a natural corn and you plant it a natural way is going to bring forth and reproduce itself so it depends on a condition that is what makes it natural that is what makes it mortal and when man was given the life of god that life of god was brought into subjection it was brought into a condition and that condition is that man must eat of the tree of life so the life of god the mortal life of god is brought on that condition so you see mortality immortality inside of mortality and when mortality meets up the condition then the mortality that is inside will come out. The same wave, all that the Lord have created, they have a natural ordinance. It must go according to that ordinance. So the life that God has given to us, because the life of God is in every man, the seed of God is in every man. That seed of God is brought under God's own condition. You cannot live anyhow. You don't have your own condition. God has his own condition. And you must subject yourself according to God's own condition. 
Now get this. It's very important. Adam could not meet that condition. He could not subject himself to the ordinance of God. And what happened? That mortal nature, that seed that was in Adam, Adam died to the things of God. He died to the reality of the spirit. Adam died to immortality. The chance of Adam manifesting immortality was cut short. Adam was disconnected from the life of God. He disconnected himself by being disobedient. So he disconnected himself from God's kind of life. From the life of God that is within him. He disconnected himself from it. And began to live another kind of life. This kind of life is what the Bible calls death. That is life disconnected from God. That is death. Death is life disconnected from God. And when one is disconnected from the source of life, what happens? He began to die. He began to die. So I want us to take close note of this. Adam disobeyed the instruction, the rule, the law of God, which is feed on the tree of life. He disobeyed it. He rather took of the tree of knowledge of good and of evil. Tree or his own tree. He so ran. He ate from it. And when he ate from it, he was disconnected from God. What happened to the life of God in Adam? Because every man that is born into this life has the seed of God in him. Every man has the seed of God in him. The seed of God is incorruptible. It is an incorruptible seed. Nothing can kill it. Even when Adam went astray, that seed remains because the seed was protected. God sealed it. Before Adam failed, God sealed it. And the opening of that seed, the releasing of the life of God inside of Adam, now depends on the law, the obedience of Adam to God's law. So it is Adam's obedience that will open up, that will release the life of God in Adam. But Adam disconnected himself from God. He died. So death, death is not a physical, somebody dying physically. No, that is not death. Understand it. We know what mortal means. And now we know what death is. Death is being disconnected from God. That is death. Everyone that is disconnected from God is death. You are just living out your own life. Everything that is in God is in the state of dormancy. Now watch. Everyone that came through the line of Adam inherited the sin of Adam. So by one man, death came into man. Sin came in. By one man. And who is that man? Adam. 
and what made that man brought in then disobedience so this death and sin is rooted in disobedience so he was disobedient to god disconnected from god he lived his own life he died to the things of god he never continued in god he now went deeper into his own life he continued until another man was born this man by his obedience all began to experience the life of god so we see death coming by one man and we see life coming by another man so we now see death and life what is the root of death carnal mind to be carnally minded is death what is the root of life to be spiritually minded is life so we see the head of death and we also see the head of life one represented us to death disconnected us from god one is reconnecting us back to god one is introducing mortality death one is bringing immortality to light now watch we now know what death is it is not physically dying now listen these two conditions both death and life is subjected to both realm whether this present realm or the other realm before christ was manifested men lived all their life in the same bondage of adam men live all their life in the bondage of adam they live all their life in that bondage so whether they are here or whether they are in the other side they are in the same bondage don't ever believe that dying to this skin is is a way to immortality no the only way to immortality is christ not if you die leave this skin drop it you leave this present world and you are not joined with christ you are dead you are completely dead you are disconnected from god you are no longer awakened you are no longer having a transforming life you are no longer connected with god you are disconnected that was what adam did to man he disconnected man everyone was disconnected whether alive or dead they were all disconnected that was what adam did it has nothing to do with dying physically no man was created before he was formed so man is much more a spiritual being than a physical being this body was just giving us to be able to have contact with the earth we have a work to do in this natural world we need to continue the lifespan the natural lifespan and that's why this body was given to us before man was formed man was first spiritual so spiritual is the essence of man's life not the physical so the physical is given so that man can control the natural life now take note of this so when we are talking about immortality don't count this don't begin to look at this if i don't fall sick if i don't do this if i don't do that no don't look at that please immortality has to do with an inward work 
Now we've seen how man is mortal, being subjected to the rule of God. And we saw a man born mortal like man, mortal like every one of us. He was born mortal. But inside of him, inside of him, the seed of God is awakening inside of him. He's not sleeping like the first man. In the first man, he's completely dead to God. But in this man, he's awakening. He's not dead to God. So this man was born a new kind of man. In this man, immortality is awakening. The life of God is awakening. He's a new man. And this man obeyed all the instruction of the Father. He subjected himself to the mortal ordinance. He subjected himself to the law of God. Listen, there's a difference between the law of God and the law of Moses. The law of God and the law of Moses are not the same. Jesus Christ never came to fulfill the law of Moses. He came to correct the law of Moses. But he came to fulfill the law of God. So when we are speaking about the law, don't bring in the law of Moses. I'll give you one example of the law of Moses. Moses gave them permission to give, you know, the right something. If you want to divorce your wife, you give him a written note. He's not from God. Is law of Moses. And Moses gave it to them because of the hardness of their heart. Now, there's something we must understand. By the time Moses got to the border between Canaan land and the wilderness, after the children of Israel rejected God, because of lack of faith. Now pay close attention to this because it's very important. Because of lack of faith, God commanded Moses to turn back into the wilderness. Now, the journey of Moses, he ended at that borderland. The remaining thing that Moses was doing was to kill them in the wilderness. Every other thing was to finish them in the wilderness. The law shine upon Moses' face, and Moses covered his face because the children of Israel doesn't want to look at him. That wasn't the will of God. So there are many laws of Moses, and the same thing is happening to us today. Many ministers started well, like Moses. They started well. But they have not come to the end of their obedience. There is end of obedience. You must come to the end of the world to get into the new world. They enjoy the gift of God. They enjoy the inspiration of God. They enjoy the manifestation of the gift of God. But they did not come to the end of themselves. They go to their place in Christ. And because they refused to move further, what happened? Christ left them. They died at that point. Their ministry ended. And they, you know, the Holy Spirit will not even give you, will not even give you instruction, will not even give you sign. When your ministry ends, it ends and you will continue moving. You think that you are still in the spirit. What happened? The journey goes back. You've turned from the borderland where you where you begin to go back to where you are coming from. Many ministries are like that. Many have begun in Christ, awaking. They receive him. They accepted him. And all of a sudden, they become cold. They left their first love. They begin to walk according to the, they allow the, the things of this carnal mind to weaken their faith. They allow the doctrines of Balaam. 
they allow the, 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 the prophecy of the prophetess Jezebel. They allow the, Nico, the doctrine of the, the deeds of the Nicolaitans. They allow it to weaken their faith. And you know what happened? The light that came upon them was put off. What happened to them? They fell into a stage of sleep. When Paul was trying to explain this, he said, because many are not discerning the Lord's body, they are sick. Imagine being in Christ and you are sick, spiritually sick. He said many even fall asleep. What does it mean to fall asleep? It is not die. May you die, you leave this flesh. That is not what it is. Sleep is a state of inactivity. When you have fallen asleep, that means nothing is going on. You are no longer awakened. You are dead. Many began well in Christ. And due to the rudiments of this world, their light was put off. They find themselves sick. They find themselves sleeping. Having the life-giving spirit and you are still not activated. Because the spirit of Christ is a life-giving spirit that activates the immortal life of God in you. It brings out a new life out of you. But because of the rudiment of this world, because they cannot discern the Lord's body, they find themselves in a state of sleep. Some even die, leave this world in that state. Many leave this world in that state. They began well in Christ. And all of a sudden, they began to follow the world. They began to doubt the, they, they began to doubt the faith of God. They left their first love. Their light was put off. They've, listen, these ones, they are sleeping. Inactivity. In a state of, it's like they are half dead. Nothing is going on anymore. They are not disconnected, but their light is put off. Now, pay close attention to this. But Paul said, though there are many in that condition, he said that we should not worry whether any is in sleeping or not. Christ will bring them along. He said, don't worry. Don't worry about this. Don't worry about this sleeping. The ones that are, in, are not yet activated. The ones that have rise up and they have died. He said, don't worry. Christ will bring them along. There is still hope for them. I just want to touch this so that we'll understand. Now we have known what death is. What mortal is. Now, let us know what death in Christ means. What does it mean to be dead in Christ? To be dead in sin and trespasses is being disconnected from God and being awakened to the reality of the world. That was what happened to the first man. He was dead to God. Now, when you have received the spirit of christ in your spirit when you have received the gospel of your salvation you begin to walk in the spirit no longer in the flesh you come to the place where the flesh is completely beheaded the carnal mind is completely beheaded you come to the place where you are dead to the things of this world dead to the mind of this world connected in Christ, dead to this world, you are ready for resurrection. When you get a seed, you plant that seed. Before that seed can come up in a resurrection, it must die. The outward covering of that seed will die. When the outward covering of that seed is dead, then the life inside of that seed is about to come up. So at that point, you are ready to hear the voice of the Son of God. Death in Christ is the order because they are the first to hear. 
It is an order. It doesn't mean those that have passed away. So the dead in Christ, it does not mean those that have passed away. Take note of that. It doesn't mean that. But it is also applicable to those that are living and those that are beyond the other side. It is applicable. So what is going on here is applicable to what is going on over there. What is going on here is not stopping what is going on over there. Because grace has come. Because salvation has come. Because the new man has come. So the sun that has risen is affecting the both sides. There is hope for both the living and the dead. So the same way Christ is transforming you, the same way he's transforming them. They that have passed away and they that are present, they that have passed away, sleeping, in whom the work of Christ is not yet completed, he gone to a point and the light was put off and they passed away. They are the sleep. So we have both conditions in the other side and in this side. They are the sleep. Now, there is a doctrine that is going on that you only put on immortality when you die. That is not true. That is not true. That is not true. Don't believe that. Now listen. Jesus Christ has abolished death. He has abolished it. He has abolished it. Now let's let somebody turn with me to 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy 1:10. Watch. But is now made manifest. What is now made manifest? Watch. Manifest. To be manifest. I explained it last time. How something is made manifest. You see, English word is limited. Something that was hidden. What was hidden? Immortal life was hidden. Man. The first man could not bring it forth. We lived and believed so many things until Christ came. Christ abolished death and he brought immortality to light. If you cannot see immortality, it, is not, it doesn't mean that immortality is not real. Christ has abolished the total. Second Timothy 1.10. He said, but is now made manifest by the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, who had abolished death and had brought life and immortality to light. How is he bringing it to light? Is it through death? Maybe when you die out of this flesh? No. Through the gospel. It is the preaching of the gospel that have brought immortality to light. That which was hidden is no longer hidden anymore. Immortality was sealed in the first man. In the last man is no longer sealed. It is made manifest. I put up a post. We are sealed to the first man, but to the second man, Everything about God is made manifest. So if your spirit is joined with his spirit, nothing of God is hidden anymore. Because Jesus Christ has manifested all things. You, if you want immortality, is in Christ. Incorruptibility is in Christ. Every promises of the Father is in Christ. He has fulfilled all. He has abolished death, completely abolished death. You see, when we read 
from 1 Corinthians 15:53. He says that so verse 54 it says so when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption and this mortal shall have put on immortality he said then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written death is swallowed up in victory who swallowed up death christ himself second timothy 1 10. Christ abolished debts. He abolished debts. That's what the Bible says. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish. So if you believe in Christ, you have escaped incorruption. Sorry, you have escaped corruption. It's as simple as that. If you believe in Christ, you have except, escaped corruption. That which Adam could not escape, you escape it. So you can no longer be corrupted. He says, as many that believe in to them that is given the power to become the sons of God. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish. Should not perish, but have everlasting life. So, believing on the gospel immortality is revealed through the preaching of the gospel immortality is not revealed when you die buried no it is revealed through the preaching of the gospel because immortality is only in one man and that is christ and how is christ appearing today many have made up their mind how they want christ to appear have have a painted image a painted picture of what they want christ is the world made manifest whatever i'm speaking to you if he's awakened to you you receive it that is christ it's as simple as that so as many that believe in him, receive him, will not perish. So they have moved away. Listen. Though they are in this flesh, but they have escaped the corruption that is in this world. They have escaped the lies that is in this world. What corrupted Eve? They've escaped it. There is a revelation of the Father given to them. The mind of Christ is given to them. They can now judge between good and bad. So the tree of knowledge of good and of evil has no more effect on them. They have escaped that which is responsible for death. Now I want us to pay close attention to this. What is responsible for death? If you can catch this, you will understand this topic. Now listen, there is an interpreter in, the, in Genesis, serpent, the interpreter. Serpent will take the word of God and water it down. When that word is watered down, he will give that watered word to the soul. Eve, 
and the soul will receive it. And it becomes letter that kills. So it is that interpreter that is responsible for death. He is misinterpreting and misrepresenting every word of life. That interpreter has become a system. That interpreter now have prophets and preachers. He now have temple, churches. He has built churches. He has built temple. He has he is now not just as it was in Genesis. A carnal mind. It has gone beyond that. That is what is responsible for death. That is what is corrupting the life of man. It's corrupting man. Because man could not tell the truth. He could not tell between the knowledge of good and of evil. Man is eating evil. And whatever you eat is what you are. And is becoming evil. So instead of the life of man to be transformed, the life of man is being diminished. Now watch this. This interpreter has cut across movements. When Pentecostal movement came up, this interpreter appeared with it. When the kingdom message came up, this interpreter appeared with it so as the word of god is progressing this interpreter is changing his mask is changing his mask and paul said even the devil the serpent he has transformed he has changed his he has masqueraded himself like the angel of light even in the kingdom message where you think that the devil cannot near, this interpreter is there. And what is he doing? It is bringing deaths. It's bringing deaths. It is making the word of life to become death. It's making the living word to become a dead word, a dead letter. We have life already with us. Christ is a life. All we need to do is to put on Christ. Eat of Christ. That is all that we need. Anybody that tells you, you only put on immortality when you pass to other side, that person is feeding you a wrong food. The person is feeding you a wrong food. The person does not recognize that you are a spiritual being. The person does not recognize that God is God of the living. He is not God of the dead. The person does not recognize that God is alive forevermore. He doesn't recognize that. He doesn't know that. He has limited your faith. Your faith is no longer complete. Your faith is no longer complete. Because if your faith is complete, immortality is in Christ. Christ manifested immortality. You wouldn't have reduced it. Just like those people, they tested it. They said, no, no, we are not, we are not prepared. We cannot enter. So they are shutting your faith. You cannot see immortality until you leave this flesh. Paul said, if only in this life we have hope. If our hope is only in this. Say we have all men most miserable. Because you are not a physical being. For crying out loud. You are not a physical being. You are a spiritual being. You are a spiritual being. Just like God is. Being a spiritual being doesn't mean that you are not living. It 
doesn't mean that. The other realm was introduced to cut short the wickedness of man. So if you are wicked, then go and wait for Christ, the other side. The Lord, he said, I'm going to cut his life short. If I allow this man to continue to live, and I, I continue to, to bear, to, I cannot bear this. The wickedness of man is too much. I can't continue with man this way. Can you imagine somebody like Cain living from that time till this time and he's still alive? Can you imagine the level of wickedness that will be in this life? He said, no, 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 no. I'm going to cut his days. His days is going to be divided into two. Since he has become flesh, he is now flesh. He is now dust. I will bring him out of that flesh. He will come out of that flesh. He's going to spend so so days in flesh and bring him the other side and finish up the work there. Where there is no flesh to deceive him. And how dare you say you are like that? You have received Christ. Immortal life. A brother was asking me if I have immortal life as I'm living. Where is Christ? Where is my life? My life is not in the grave. So if you are waiting to go to the grave to receive your life, you'll be disappointed because immortality is not in the grave. Immortality is not there. So if you say immortality is in the other side, that is not where Christ is. Christ is not in the other side. Christ is here. So if you say, until you go there, you receive immortality, brother, you'll be disappointed because Christ is not there. Christ is not in the grave. You can't find him there. You cannot find him there at all. He's not there. So as many in whose hope is when they die from this side of the world, then they will receive immortality. You are welcome. You can continue in that. But for me, because he lives, I am living also. Because he lives. My life is hidden in Christ. If I want to know about immortality, know more about Christ. Because when Christ is revealed, your life is revealed with him. Because that is where your life is. Your life is no longer in the first man. That's why you must die to anything that belongs to the first man. It's no longer there. You cannot find Christ in the first man. Christ is not in the tomb anymore. Christ is raptured out of the system of man. And that's why the gospel is calling you out of man. It's calling you out of carnality. It's calling you out of corruption. It's calling you out of everything that has to do with the nature of man. It's a come out of her, my people. The Bible calls it her. It's so rare. Come out of her. Come out. You can't find Christ there anymore. Christ is going to be revealed from, the, from up. Not from down anymore. He's out of this place. So that's why we must also come out. Revelation 12 is revealing the woman. Where is that woman coming from? Is it coming from the grave? No. It's coming from the realm of the spirit. So it must be captured and be raptured up into the spirit. That is where Christ is. That is where immortality is. Immortality is no longer here. It's no longer in Babylon. Is no longer in the grave. So we must all be dead to everything that has to do with carnality. You must be dead to the mind of man. You must be dead to the system of man. You must be dead to the thinking of man. You must be dead to everything that is man. And you must be alive in Christ. A songwriter says, because he lives... I can face tomorrow because he lives. All fear is gone 
because I know oh, he owns my future. My life is what I live in just because he lives. My life is no longer here, is in Christ. Everything that we affect this life must come from Christ. We have come to the end of man in our teaching. We have come to the end of man in our teaching. Come to the end of yourself. Come to the end of yourself. Let the old world pass away. Let that book pass away. It has served its time. It is now time for immortality to be made manifest. Mortality has served its time. We have seen immortality come out of mortality. Christ is our example. Mortality has served its time. We must come to the end of ourselves. We must come to the end of our worry. We must come to the end of our fear. We must come to the end of everything that has to do with man. Come to the end of it. Come to that place of peace where there is silence. When you have come to this end of yourself, then there is going to be an unveiling. That's why the book of Revelation is the unveiling of Christ. This is the revelation of Jesus Christ. It is an unveiling. It is an unveiling. Praise be the name of the Lord. You are asking me if I have immortal life. Go and ask Christ. That is where my life is. Don't ask me. Ask Christ. Ask him. Christ is my life. If Christ is immortal, then I am immortal. If Christ is incorruptible, then I'm incorruptible. Ask him. Don't ask the old man. The old man is in the grave. Or you can go to the grave and ask that man. This man is a new man. I no longer live by the rudiments of this world. I no longer live by the manipulation of the serpentine nature of man. I live by Christ. And Christ is the world. And he's alive. You see, you see he's he who was dead. And he's alive forevermore. He's alive. He said you are complete. You that thinks that you are not complete. Think twice. Because Christ is your life. Say you are complete in him. Who is the head of principalities and power. Paul said. Let this mortal put on immortality. Let this corruptible put on in corruption put on jesus put on jesus because jesus christ is who you are this one is a temporal being mortal is temporal let this mortal put on immortality you want to remain temporal no problem me i have put on christ let that which is temporal let it go with temporal let that which we perish let it go with the word i have put on christ so if somebody asks you have you put on christ i will answer him jesus christ is my life all you need to do is to see christ revealed you see your life revealed. that is what you need Praise be the name of the Lord. So let's turn to the book of Romans 5. We're going to read three verses before we close. But God commended his love towards us, in that while we are yet sinners, Christ died for us. Watch that. While we are yet sinners, Christ died for us. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. Wherefore, 
As by one man sin entered into this world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men. You see, sin entered into this world by one man. Sin entered into your life by one man. Now watch. For that all have sinned, he said, and dead by sin. So death passed to all men, for that all have sinned. For if by one man offense, death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace of the gift of righteousness shall in life live by one, Jesus Christ. We have experienced mortality. We have experienced death. We have experienced discouragement. We have experienced so much by one man. Now is time for mortality to pass away. Let mortality put on immortality. It is time for death to put on life. Let death be abolished. It is time for everything that is temporal pass away. We have seen through the eye of the carnal man. Now it's time to see through the eye of Christ. It's time to receive immortality into our spirits. It's time to embrace it. Embrace Christ. Put him on. Sink into him. It is time. All things are passed away. Behold, this is new. Jesus Christ is no longer in the grave. Don't seek to go to the grave. God is God of the living, not God of the dead. He said, I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I am God of the living, not God of the dead. Not the one that are disconnected from him. He is God to the ones that are connected to them. To the ones that have humbled themselves to his ordinance. Somebody will tell me, no more God. Shut up. Shut up. Keep that gospel to yourself. You have passed no more God. Listen, as long as you are in this flesh, you must obey the ordinance of Christ. You must obedience to the ordinance of Christ. As long as you are in this flesh, you must obey his ordinance. You must continue to obey it. Obey it until you come to the end of yourself. Until it becomes life. You are living that life out of yourself. You are living it out. It becomes a fountain of life. So when you have come to that place, not just claiming it, it's more than claim. Please. Faith without work is death. That is, I'm not against saying you have passed God. Or I'm not against it. I'm not, I'm not against it. Fine and good. Listen. Whatever is your confession, you must back it up with action. Because the Lord is going to reveal himself. And the more of himself that is revealed, then you continue to hear his voice. You continue to rise up from glory to glory from resurrection to resurrection from faith to faith the more of his voice is revealed to you the more of the thunder is speaking to you the more of him you know is being risen up you continue to rise from glory to glory from glory to glory from glory to glory you continue to rise you are not going to be subjected to the life of the ages now, let me talk a little about the life of the ages. Somebody will tell you, he subjected, we have not entered a new age. We have not done this. We have not done that. Now, let me just tell you. Now, every age have a light. Before Jesus was born, there was a standard of God. That standard of God was the light. Suddenly, John the Baptist came on board and brought up a higher standard. When Jesus came, John the Baptist submitted to him. Jesus Christ became the standard. Now listen. 
Christ is life. And when the children, when the apostles was taken to the mountain, they saw Moses, they saw Elijah, they saw Jesus. They wanted to build three tabernacles. But a voice came out of the cloud. And what did that voice say? He said, don't hear Moses. Don't hear Elijah. You are going to hear my son. So the voice of the son supersedes all these others. Why many are here, they are practicing religion that have passed 2,000 years ago. They are caught up in age that have passed. Some are caught up even in John the Baptist's day. Some are caught up in the day of Moses. Some are caught up in the day of Elijah. So many people are caught up in different, different ages. Why those that are in Christ are caught up in the day of the Lord. They're not subjected to the life of age. They're not subjected to the life of age. They are connected to the day of the Lord. So they're not going to be taken away, swiped away by the wings of change, the wings of doctrine. The wings of anything that is blowing, nothing is going to affect them because they are straight connected to the day of the Lord. The day of the Lord is the standard for all the ages. So many are living in the day of the Lord already. Why some are living in the day of Moses? Some are living in the day of, of, um, of John the Baptist. Some are living, those days are enlightenment. Those days are enlightenment. So the light that some have is the light of the day before Jesus. They say they are only Judaism. That is the light you have. That day is past. Everything about that day is past. You're not living eternal. You're not having eternal life. The life you're having is a life that is subject to age. You need to wake up from sleep. You need to wake up from slumber. The same thing many today, they are living in the day, the day of, of kingdom message. There is a day of kingdom message. Many are living in that day. Kingdom message is not the day of the Lord. It's not. So if you are caught up in the day of kingdom message, listen. You, 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 you have reduced your life to age because it's, it is a time, it's an enlightenment, it's an age. You must come across, come out of that age. Every age that is less than the day of the Lord at a point will become Babylon. I'm telling you, I'm not against anybody, but at a time, it will become Babylon. It will become Babylon. So the Lord is raising a people, a people that are connected to him in the spirit, a people that are, are eating out of the spirit, out of the stream of life, out of immortality, out of the life of God that is not subjected to ages, that is not subjected to time. If the Christ in you is the Christ of the day of, um, of the prophets, it is not a mortal. It will pass away. Because it was Christ in that day. If the Christ in you is the one in the day of John the Baptist, you, are, you don't have eternal life. You don't have a mortal life in you. You are not drinking out of that immortal life, out of the stream of immortal life. You are drinking from Babylon. If the Christ in you is the one in the sister, in the in the what is it called kingdom message system because kingdom message also have become a system so if you are drinking from the kingdom message water you are not drinking from the son of god you are not drinking from immortal life what you have is a limited life you need to come up brother you need to come up sister you need to come up you need to drink from immortality you need to drink from the life of the spirits you need to drink from the day of the Lord. You need to drink from the life that is not subjected to time. 
is not subjected to man reasoning. It's not subjected to anything that has to do with man. He needs to drink from the life of the Spirit. God bless you all. Let us pray. We thank you, Father, for today, Lord. We bless you for your word that has come forth. You have taken time to break this to us, Lord, this bread of life. You have made us to understand that we are not drinking of a, a system of man. We are not drinking of a broken system. We are drinking of a river of life. The spirit of Jesus Christ given to all men. We are we also connected because everyone that is connected to him is connected to immortality. We are drinking out of the stream of God. And from that stream, our life is being sanctified, is being glorified. Father, we thank you, Lord. Everyone, oh God, that is disconnected from this stream, Lord, by this message, connect them. Connect them back, Lord. Let them eat of the hidden manna. Let them eat of the voice of the Son of God. Father, bring them out of the system, broken system of man. All the systems have become disconnected from you. Every system that is less than the day of the Lord is disconnected from you. And it has become a bed where many things come to sheets. It has become a cage, a cage of unclean beds. Father, may we not be like that, Father. Connect us, Lord, to you, the source of life. Where we eat life, where we speak life, where we no longer walk by the flesh, why we no longer walk by the reasoning of man, Lord. You have brought us, oh God, where the thunder is speaking. You brought us to the throne room, Lord, out, out of Babylon, Father. Those that are still yet in Babylon, Father, raise them up, Lord. Let them understand. There is a life beyond this life. There is a life inside this life. There is a life that is greater than this life. That will swallow up this life. Oh God. Those that have not seen their change in a twinkle of an eye. Give them that experience Father. Those that have not behold your presence. Father give them that experience Father. Those that are sick in their body, Father, heal them in the name of Jesus Christ. Help us, O oh God. Help me, Father. Help everyone, O oh God, that have come to listen. Father, as we are entering into the day, not the day of Elijah, not the day of Moses, not the day of John the Baptist. As we are entering into the day of the seven thunders. Where you are speaking to your people. And your people are receiving direct from you. Help everyone Lord. Thank you Lord Jesus Christ. We worship you Father. For in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. God bless you all. God bless you all.